Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Delic Logistic Partners stock and analyzing its financial ratios. Also if you'd like to do a private zoom session receive a custom valuation for a stock of your choice or support the channel you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Delic is an oil and gas midstream company. Midstream refers to points in the oil production process that falls between upstream and downstream. Midstream activities include the storage, processing, and transportation of petroleum. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.3 billion market cap. That's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're trading at 29.55 and they have 43 million shares outstanding. To calculate shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plant, and equipment. And if a company has positive free cash flow, it has the ability to pay down debt, pay dividends, acquire other businesses, or invest back into their business to grow it. If a company has negative free cash flow, it might not be able to do any of those things. And this company has positive free cash flow in three to four years. It has a negative in 2018. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And this company has positive and growing net income each year. The revenue is on the top of the income statement and their revenue grows from 2016 to 2018 but drops in 2019. Their margins look pretty consistent, 13% to 17%. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into profit. The higher your expenses, the lower your net income and the lower your net profit margin. So in 2019, this company converted 17% of its revenue into profit. That means 83% went towards expenses. Let's go to the cash flow statement to see why they had negative free cash flow in 2018. So to calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow, which is up here, minus capex. And you can see in most years they had positive and pretty healthy operating cash flows. The lowest was 87 million, the highest was 147 million. CapEx is the investment in property, plant, and equipment. So if a company wants to buy a factory to make products or wants to buy expensive machinery, that's part of CapEx. You can see in 2018 their CapEx was much more than in prior years. That brought down their free cash flow to negative. They did have the highest cash flow from operations in 2018, but their CapEx was so big it brought them to negative 9.2 million. When you invest in your business, it's generally considered a good thing. So if you purchased a building for $100 million, you would need a nice return, at least $100 million to break even, but you'd want a lot more. Then there's opportunity costs, where if a company invested in a different area, it would have had a greater return. These are all things to think about when you analyze a company. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $835 million of debt and negative $151 million of equity. That's not a good sign. You generally don't want to see negative equity. That means the liabilities are greater than the assets. And they pay 5.67% interest on their debt. And they don't pay taxes because they're a master limited partnership. To qualify, the business must receive at least 90% of its revenue from natural resources or real estate. They receive their revenue from natural resources. And MLP issues units instead of shares. So there's no equity on the balance sheet. In order to calculate the equity, I had to take the total assets minus total liabilities. Since they have negative equity, they're 100% debt, and their WAC is 5.67%, which is the cost of debt. They have a really high beta of 3.0. Beta is the volatility of the stock relative to the market. For example, the S&P 500 has a beta of 1. This company has a beta of 3, which means the stock moves 3 times the market. So if the market goes up 1% in a certain time frame, this stock should go up 3%. If the market goes down 1%, this stock should go down 3%. Regression analysis is used to calculate beta. 
Regression analysis allows you to examine the relationship between two or more variables. Beta is systematic risk. It's the risk of the overall market, which cannot be diversified away. Unsystematic risk is the relationship that can be diversified away. The way businesses can diversify away risk is to operate their business successfully. And the WAC is a discount rate companies use when they want to take on new projects. So say for example, a new project came along that cost $1 million up front, but they would receive $100,000 of cash flows over the next 20 years. And if you discounted those 20 years of cash flows back to today and its value in today's dollars was $1.5 million, you would take on a project because it cost you a million dollars. You'd be making $500,000. But say for instance, you discount those 20 years of cash flows back to today and it was worth $800,000 in today's dollars, you would not take on a project because it cost a million, you'd be losing $200,000 and you only want to take on projects that add value to the company. And the WAC is a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows for this model. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 1.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.6 billion. We divide that by 43 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 3701. The trading at 29.55. So the trading at a 20% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher. They're saying the stock is worth 5170. Their valuation is based off of the average analyst estimate. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So the stock price was in the low 30s for many years, then took a major dip at coronavirus and it actually came back to past its all time high, but reverted back a little bit. So it looks like it could be a really good value. Their dividend yield is over 12% and they seem to be raising their dividend periodically. It was as low as 57 cents a few years back but now it's up to 90 cents, it's all time high. So it looks like a great stock if you wanna get a nice dividend payment. And it's good to remember that the stock price is not directly related to how well a company's doing. That's just a function of the stock price. The true value of the stock price is supply and demand of the market. The more people that want to buy a stock, it will push the price higher. And the more people that want to sell a stock, it will push the price lower until equilibrium is met. Sometimes you see companies reporting really bad financials, but their stock price keeps going up. And then other companies are reporting really great financials, but their stock price keeps going down because the market is forward looking. So it can be difficult trying to understand market sentiment and investor psychology, but that's part of investing. Let's look at the financial ratios. Really good PE, the median for the market 16.3, the average is 18.1. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 13.1. So investors are paying $13.10 for $1 of earnings. They also have a good price to sales ratio. The median is 2.0, the average is 4.7. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 2.2. So investors are paying $2.20 for $1 of revenue. They have a negative price to book. The median is 2.3, the average is 4.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're negative because they have negative equity. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. Good interest coverage ratio, the median is 4.0, the average is 13.0. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 2.7, so they can cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. It's called operating income on the income statement. They have negative ROE, the median is 12%, the market average is 13%. ROE is net income over equity, they have negative equity, so we can't look at the ROE. They have a decent current ratio. The median is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. They're at 1.0, so they could almost cover their current liabilities. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. 
Examples are cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. Current liabilities are debts and payables that are due within 12 months. Examples are current debt and accounts payable. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on 25 oil and gas midstream companies. And Delic is here in the middle, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. They're pretty much worse than everything, except dividend yield. They're 12.4%. The average is 12.07%. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 20% discount. Their ratios look pretty weak, but their financials aren't too bad. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe or comment below. I respond to all comments. Also, if you'd like to do a private Zoom session with me, receive a custom valuation for a stock of your choice or support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.